Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm back with a little update for the engines and there have been a couple of changes to the dev test and we're very very close to approaching stable. First up, there have obviously been a pile of tweaks. There's been tweaks to heating, efficiency, uh, loads of bug fixes and like I say we seem to be closing in on a stable release after the last little bit of bug hunting. Uh, there are a few big changes that I want to cover though. Now, before we get to the big ones, here's a little one, but it's cool. Now, if you place an engine, well, okay, let's get a block down. And let's get our fuel engine and a fuel engine generator, and pop it down there. And we can now place a cylinder directly on top of the engine. Now, these also provide, like, 10 power. It's absolutely pathetic, and it's got quite a bad fuel efficiency. But this, you can obviously improve this uh, single cylinder en engine, but it means you don't have to worry about crankshafts. It's very cool. Uh, let's you make even teeny tinier engines. Now, don't write this off either. You can do a lot with a one cylinder engine. Um, it's, uh, you get like really quite a bit of power out of a single cylinder if you go balls to the wall and completely ignore fuel efficiency. You can also get a fairly efficient one to get maybe two or three hundred uh, power. Quite good. Alright, next up, turbochargers and superchargers have now had their roles reversed. So turbos now work at high RPM and superchargers now work better at low RPM. They also provide a small efficiency boost at all RPM values and the tooltips have been updated to reflect this. Now this is the big one. Turbochargers are now a two block part and must connect to both a carburetor with the white half and a cylinder with the black half. Here's one here, you can have a wee look see. And you can see the inputs, that's the side that you connect to the cylinder and that's your exhaust output there, the little bullet tip. Uh, these provide a small boost to cooling on the cylinder. Uh, it's something like having an, ex an exhaust output. And uh, they have their own exhaust output as well. Now while it currently doesn't matter where you send your exhaust gases, they will function even when sent directly into a solid block. I, I really prefer to use the exhaust parts to get all of the gases away from the engine. And you can also use the exhaust uh, gases to power inline turbochargers, so it's not completely useless. Now the inline turbos, which are in the exhausts part here, um, the inline turbos must be connected to an exhaust and a carburetor, and they won't provide any cooling bonuses because they're not attached to an actual uh, a cylinder per se, but it will provide an efficiency boost to the carburetor at high RPM values, the same as a normal one. The inline uh, the turbos must have exhaust gas inputs to function and they also have an output much like the other turbo variant. So if we're actually going to place one of these, it can be a bit of a pain. Let's just build a very very quick demonstration engine to show you how the carburetors connect to things, or the turbos do actually. Let's just use our previous example here and build a new fuel engine. Now the turbochargers have left and right variants and you can see they output on different sides and if you have symmetry turned on they will correctly uh, put the mirrored one down so you see that's the right one that's the left one and they'll both output to the same side. Now this is your the, the side of the black half that is your output side for your exhaust gases so if we get an exhaust pipe you can stick a corner pipe on here and that'll start outputting gas you see one gas is leaving here. Now when we add those we get a reduction to or we get an increase to our efficiency whenever this cylinder is running at high rpm and it applies to this carburetor that these two are attached to so yay for that now if we were to just quickly root our gases up here so i can show off the inline turbocharger Okay, so inline turbocharger. You have to connect these via the flat end at the top there. They can be a real pain in the bum to place because you can't 
place them there directly. I mean, if this isn't here, I can't I can't place it like that. I have to have a block above it, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But if you have your infrastructure set up first, you can plunk it down there. Now, because I'm doing it this side, it doesn't matter which side. Uh, it's not going to be symmetrical, I'm afraid. But here, we now have this inputting from these two turbochargers at the side, and they're going up through this pipe down here and they're going into this turbocharger which is the inline ver variant and then it's spitting its exhaust gases out here so set that there we can see two exhaust gases leaving here and that's the two exhaust gases from these two exhausts on the cylinder because these obviously count as exhausts and bring exhaust gases out of the cylinder so yeah that is how you place those they're a little bit finicky they're an absolute Tetris nightmare, but they can make your engines at high efficiencies extremely powerful. As you can see here, we'll just normalize the usage curve. This gives a nice flat one. And it's at the top end, it's totally full. And then thump, whenever you get the maximum load, your efficiency actually goes up. So this particular type of engine with lots and lots of turbochargers works extremely well when it's at high RPM values. Now, like I say, both of these have left and right variants, so you can use them symmetrically. And the biggest drawback with these is because of the infrastructure that you have to place around them, your your build's going to get very big. That's a wonderful thing about this new system. It's a real trade-off. And I'm going to show you a couple of engine examples very shortly, and uh, you'll see just how the different things trade off against each other, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, first of all, there's actually been a really cool addition to the localized resources system. Uh, if we bring up the map here, we'll see we have a new button here. Uh, now, I haven't played with this extensively yet, but um, it lets you set up supply fleets that will receive or deposit resources to different fleets in your army without you having to move the resources around manually. Now, currently the fleets themselves have to still be controlled by the player, so you have to take your fleet, your resource frigate or whatever it is, move it to its loading area, and it'll automatically fill up there, and then you can move it to another ship that it's programmed to deposit onto, and it'll go there and empty its ship automatically without you having to go in and manually move all of the individual resources to the ship. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Also, there are a few new exhaust parts. Uh, we have the exhaust hull pipe. This one is actually really cool. If you pop that there, you can actually get a full block, lets you put your engines inside and output your stuff nicely. Very cool. We have these L pipes, which let you get creative with your routing, and you can have corners now, which is a real godsend. I've used these already, and they're really good. And what else? No, well, that's it. Well, I say that's it. They're both brilliant. Um, really, really nice features and additions to the exhaust parts. So, let us get on to the examples. Okay, so here's a couple of example engines. They're all roughly the same length. Uh, I think they're all actually exactly the same length, except that one on the end hasn't got a radiator on the end. And they're all designed in two block segments. So if I took this slice here and prefabbed it, those two blocks there, uh, that's how I built this. I can just take that segment and plump, 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 plump all the way along as long as I want it to be. And then there's just a little bit of uh, finishing up with the wiring that you have to do to put the rest of the exhausts on. In this case, I just pop one of these hull blocks on the end. Nice little exhaust. Very sweet. This particular engine is a super efficient, high RPM engine. So we get normalize the usage curves here, you see it's got that dip that the other one had at the high RPM values. And it's actually like more efficient at high RPM than it is at low RPM. Uh, this particular engine is about 220, 230 power per unit of fuel when it's running at max, and about 130-ish whenever it's running at 10%. Now how you get these numbers is you have your maximum power when it's low efficiency, and that's basically whatever its uh, its absolute top end is, based on its current temperature value. Uh, then we want to go the fuel use at 100%, and we have to divide 
fuel or divide the maximum power by the fuel use. So that will give us our 228. Uh, in this case, it's not actually running at full power. I believe the maximum power goes down a little tiny bit, but this thing's really well cooled. There's a bunch of radiators down the center and it works very well. Uh, it's only got 3000 total power, which is quite low. Um, and it, it's very large for that low output, but it is extremely efficient. Like that, that is a really, really efficient engine. Um, there's three turbos attached to each carburetor here. You can see all lovingly crafted and clumped together there, just to keep the profile down. I didn't make it too big. And there's only uh, one cylinder on either side of the crankshaft. I didn't try and place one in on top. This allows me a little bit more room to make each carburetor more efficient. There's uh, two carbs per cylinder, as each one shares it, and they obviously get all of their efficiency bonuses passed on from onto both cylinders. So if you can manage to pull it off and get a, a really efficient carb attached to more than one cylinder, then you're doing well. That is more or less it for this engine. But yeah, it, it runs very, very efficient at high RPM values. So this is an engine that you want to be running hard all the time at like full pelt. On to the next engine. I call this guy the Guzzler because I took no efficiency into consideration when I was building it. It has a stupid power output. It's like 24,000 at the minute. I think it dips down to about 22,000 whenever it's at max load. Uh, the power per fuel, on the other hand, uh, remember this one, 228 at 100%, this guy, 66. Yeah, 66 power per fuel. <laughs> really inefficient. And even if we go down to 10% RPM, which helps our fuel efficiency a little bit, it only goes up to 95. So this behemoth, this big smoky mess here, has got these lovely big black plume is much less efficient than the other ones. It also runs really, 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 really hot because it's got two fuel injectors per cylinder. Uh, every cylinder has one exhaust attached and yeah, there's it's actually an asymmetric, uh, asymmetrical system, sorry, <laughs> to any OCD peeps out there. And it, it feeds up to the right here and connects all the way down to the back and outputs to this one singular point with 64 exhaust gases leaving through this point and a plunked a nice big radiator on the end. This thing has so many radiators to keep it like cooled down and if I pop in here this is still running at 35% temperature even though it's only at about what 70% load. So yeah that is a monstrous monstrous engine and <laughs> Yeah, if you want to just build, like get as much fuel into or as much power into as small a space as possible, this is how you do it. But bear in mind you are going to need so much fuel it's not even funny. Uh, this is actually the same platform as the last one I was using. You notice there's now three refineries, I had to build an extra one just to fuel this thing at max load. It's absolutely stupid. But yeah, anyway. On to the next engine. Now, this third and final engine is a general purpose engine. It's somewhere in between the other two, a little bit sort of good across the board. It has 32,000 total power, so it's not a terrible, you know, it's not kick ass, it's not going to absolutely throw out the, the power at an alarming rate, but it, it's pretty efficient at both the top and bottom end. Whenever it's at absolute max and it's not designed to run at absolute max. This is something you want to be somewhere in the middle of the board. Um, it runs at 137-ish uh, power per fuel. And whenever it's at 10% RPM, it gets 343. So it's really efficient at the low end of the RPM scale. But it's not quite so good at the top, but it levels off a bit. Now this is the, the normalized usage curve for it, and you see while the other ones were all flat at the top and then have a dip down here, this one's actually low at the bottom and goes up a little bit slowly. So it's got this nice little curve at the top that stops the fuel usage going absolutely crazy. We sort of want to be running this engine maybe tops about 
what, 30 or 40 percent load before it gets sky high. You could even actually set for this the maximum drive to 40 percent and that would prevent it from actually going above where you want it to be. Then again if you're doing this there's no point having turbochargers. Um, if, if you want to add turbos you want to let it run at maximum RPM because there's no point putting them there otherwise. If you want to uh, throttle an engine to absolutely minimum then build it for that specific RPM value. So if you have an engine that you want to run at, for example, 20 maximum drive, and you know it's going to be running full tilt all the time, you want to gauge your uh, usage for a 20% engine. So you can custom build that so that it's good at that, at that range, which is a really cool feature. The good thing about this uh, particular engine you know, is obviously the, the high efficiency at low RPM, and it's also quite small. So, you know, as far as parts are concerned, 15.3, it's not a huge amount of parts, and it fits quite nicely into, you know, it's what, 5 by 3. There's not, I'm not using the bottom of the shaft here, so, yeah, it's a, a very compact, sort of general purpose, useful little engine. But that's a couple of examples for you. Um, I will get rid of this. I, actually, I will leave this little one here, and uh, I'll just save it here for you too. It's not. It's absolutely worthless, but it's an example of how you place those bloody things. And we'll save this up. I'm going to put this guy, uh, get a blueprint for this. I'll, I'll save it to my Google Drive and put a blueprint up for you. Uh, so you can download it and have a look at the engines yourself and see if they're any good to you. To be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% sure just how good these engines are. I think I've got it pretty well sussed with this guy. This is a very, very efficient engine. Uh, this is not how you want to build engines ever, because it will empty your fuel tanks immediately. And I'm pretty happy with this one as a sort of general purpose engine. I would say that uh, building a sort of 3000 power engine with the old ones would be somewhere around the same size as this, I would like to say. Give or take. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool system. And until you get into the crazy high power stuff, and if you wanted to make, you know, for example, an engine with this efficiency that puts out this sort of power, how big do you think it's going to be? I mean, you need 3,200, that, and that is 2,400. So you need about eight of these to get the same output. So, yeah, it's got a great trade off system. And that, that's the thing I really, really like about the, this, this new system. Yeah, I know everyone's got used to having massive amounts of power, but come on, guys, wise up. Like, this is a game, there, wants, there has to be some sort of competition. And being able to lather your, sh your ships and shields and just completely encase them in concrete, more or less, makes it a little bit unfun. So, yeah, everyone likes explosions. Give the explosions to the other guys, too. Be considerate. But yeah, now, now that I've, uh, this whole thing is approaching the stable build, I can sort of start trying to apply these engines to actual ships rather than just a test bed. I've done a little bit of fiddling with them already, and I really love how small engines are still quite powerful. But finding the optimal setups is work for the future. I'm really looking forward to retrofitting some of my other ships to see what sort of awesome engines we can come up with. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.